heard about it, or maybe you should have all heard about it. We're talking about PIP insurance, but do we really understand what it is? Catherine Stone from Barbus Law is here to break it down and tell us why it's important when it comes to auto accidents. Catherine, how are you? Good, how are you? I am well, and you know, we've talked about PIP insurance before, yes. but I know you, and I know you <laughs> want to talk about it again because you're seeing something in your practice that you want to share. Well, you know, I always have a story um, or an example from, you know, the clients that I deal with. And um, recently I had a client that was involved um, in, a, he was the person that was hit in a hit and run. Um, and so there was no defendant to be able to go after in this particular situation. So my client does have uninsured motorist coverage, which covers this type of incident. Okay. Um, but, you know, the first and foremost question that he had and that a lot of my clients have, which is why I wanted to bring it up again, is why do I have to use my insurance to pay for medical treatment? Why do I have to fill out this PIP application? This, and remember, PIP is personal injury protection. It's required by the state of Florida um, that every driver have at least 10000 in coverage for personal injury protection PIP. Um, and so, but I get it routinely almost in every other case that, that comes into the office is I have to have that conversation about why you have to fill out, because you have to submit an application to your insurance company to invoke that um, PIP and let them know that you have been injured, you are seeking medical treatment, and that they will be getting bills from the insurance or, or from um, a medical provider. Or maybe you did go to the hospital and you told your, you know, immediately the hospital realized it was an auto accident. They immediately should have asked you for your auto accident uh, or your auto insurance card to get all the policy information down to submit that to, to PIP. And um, remember, it's $10,000 that they pay out of the first 10, uh, up to the 10000 but they only pay at 80% of the bill. Okay, so if uh -huh. the bill is $1,000, they're only required to legally pay $800. Okay. Um, now, you can have deductibles um, with regards to your PIP insurance where you may be responsible for a certain amount up to uh, before that PIP kicks in. Um, a lot of people have a $500 to $1,000 deductible. But the law requires that we utilize that PIP anytime you're getting medical treatment. Um, and oftentimes clients will try to use their health insurance. Yeah, where does that now, fall in? They, they will go to their, let's say they don't go to the hospital, but let's say they go to their primary care physician and are complaining of injuries related to the accident. Um, most primary care physicians do not um, submit bills to PIP. They don't bill PIP. They're not a PIP provider. Um, they will submit it, that initial um, course of treatment to your health insurance company. Um, but if you try to continue to treat and utilize your health insurance, there could become an issue where they say, we're not going to cover this. This should be covered by PIP. And then once you've exhausted your PIP, then you can go back and start using your health insurance. So if you do get into a situation where you've already used medical and not PIP first, it's not still too late. You can still Correct. get those PIP Correct. benefits. Now you have to have sought emergency medical care, um, they're called EMCs, within 14 days of the accident, or that $10,000 gets reduced down to $2,500. Oh, that's a big reduction yes. right there. So you'll all, oftentimes hear, or you'll hear on the radio, you've got to seek treatment within 14 days. Um, and, and that's, the law changed several years ago with regards to that. So there are some requirements with regards to being able to maximize that PIP. But also remember, this is a no-fault insurance program, which means utilizing that PIP insurance should, is not a tag against you, against your insurance. That's key. Okay? That's key to point out. And, and that's why it's called the no-fault PIP statute. Um, so it doesn't matter if you caused the accident or someone else caused it. You've got that 10000 there. You've paid for that as part of um, your premium. And um, it's no fault, which means they, they should not affect your insurance rates. I'm not an insurance agent, but it but should not. And so even if you know who the person that was the at-fault driver, you still, that 10000 comes out of your own PIP. Yes. Again, thank you for clarifying all this. We always <laughs> appreciate your time. And if you've got any questions about PIP or anything else dealing with your rights, be sure to give Barbus Law a call, 1-800-BARBUS-LAW, or go to barbuslaw.com slash know your rights.